Everyone, hi. Once again, Bruce Muffs and LCSW from Sunridge of Nevada. And today we have another video for you to understand and analyze and understand how we found it to be very, very interesting and very, very dynamic. Here we go. Okay, the song we're doing actually came from an artist who was overseas. And he had seen our videos and liked what we had done. And he had asked us if we could review one of his songs. The song, as you can see behind me, is called Tomorrow, and the artist, his name is Jay, J-A-Y-E. Fine. Okay. He was dealing with a lot of depression and guilt, and where did the depression and guilt come from? Because of the issues that he was having where he had gotten married, and he felt that he and his wife could not take care of his aging parents. Okay, fine. And I got to give the guy a lot of credit because he talked about a he's talking about a topic that people rarely if ever really want to talk about openly. So credit Jay to you for even broaching the topic and this kind of perspective. So, um, and the thing is, it's something that we all going to have to deal with one day or another. Um, you know, whether it's about our own mortality or our own family, we're all going to deal with this issue. Now, just to support Jay on how tough this concept is of doing right by your parents and truly honoring them, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments. And in the Ten Commandments, the first five are God to man, and the next five to ten, you know, are going to be, are going to be six to ten, I'm sorry, are going to be man to man. So the honor your father, your mother commandment is in the fifth slot. So the question is, why the fifth? So the question is, the reason why it's in the middle of because of all the Ten Commandments, all the big boys, that is the hardest commandment to follow. And it has attributes to both the God to man and the man to man. So just to make you guys understand something, even other religions have dealt with this topic from the very beginning. Okay, fine. We're going to go right into the song, and here we go. The song, again, is called Tomorrow, and it's by Jay. Now, he has a video. He did, he did, he's a really bright guy and a smart guy in a lot of ways because what he did for us was he had all the lyrics of the song, and then he had a synopsis of how the song came about. So he's a clever and sharp guy in general. But it starts off like this. It's, again, apologize for my singing, but it's not so bad, oh, don't be sad. And the video, when you watch him walking, it's an alone walk. There's no one there, okay? No one by his side. It's a lonely, sad walk. It's a, to me, a suicide walk. Now, and you, now they, he talks about this also. When he shot the video, he had a clown face on, clown makeup, which, of course, is indicative of the Joker from the hugely popular movie that came out this year. And what it means to me in a standard is that it represents a hidden and closed off feelings. You're closeted. You're not sharing your emotions because you can't see the face. And you can't see, ultimately, the real me. All right. Now, in the very beginning of the song, you hear, you better do what you're told, okay? And then you hear it again, you better do what you're told. And then you hear it a third time, you better do what you're told, all right? And what that's saying is to remind him, and it's saying it by three times, to me, when you say you better do what you're told, to remind him that you better live up to your expectations as a good Asian son is supposed to do. You're supposed to take care of your parents. What are you? You know, you're a bad son. You know, where is your love for your mother? And it also comes like this in the, in the third paragraph. I haven't been thinking much. I haven't been feeling much. Okay. And what they're saying basically is twice when, they, you know, I haven't been feeling thinking much. I haven't been feeling much is don't think, don't feel. Just do what you're told. That why, why are you thinking? Why are you feeling? A good Asian son does what he's told. He loves his parents. So stop overthinking it. Now, in the next line, he goes, I don't give a blank. You know, and the thing is like, you know, what he's trying to say is like, you know, what they're saying back to him is that, oh, you want to use curse words? You want to talk tough? You know, you're going to give the impression you don't care? You know, then listen to the next line. You better do what you're told that third time again. You know, bad boy, tough guy, you want to use a curse word? We don't care. Do what you're told. Okay, now, next paragraph goes like this. Um, now, the drugs don't work, the booze, the sex don't work. No, the money don't work. Now, my body don't work. Okay, what he's saying is, I've tried everything in my power to numb my emotions, and nothing is working anymore. Okay, because it's all physical, if you think about it. 
drugs, booze, sex, money, body. So nothing is working anymore, and it's not going to work anymore because it's all physical, and it's not spiritual, and it's not emotional. So like I talked about, it's like eating cotton candy. Uh, you know, you can make it away with it for once, twice, three times a day. It gets to be, ugh, who wants to eat that stuff? Because there's no substance to the cotton candy. So in the end, yeah, right, your body is not going to be working. Okay. And then he closes with the paragraph. He goes, the biggest fear of all is really fearing nothing at all. Ooh. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Because when you don't fear and you don't feel, okay, and then the body does not react because you're becoming numb to life. And then this is when you think suicide equals death will have the answer that you're looking for. This is when you need your friends, you need your family, you need clinical support more than ever. When you start thinking that this is a rational thought, that's a problem. You know, i.e., I get like Bruce, you know, I saw no way out, you know, i.e., this is my only option, Bruce. It's all I th could think of at that time. Nothing else was making sense. You know, i.e., I didn't care anymore, you know, red flag, red flag. When you're hearing those kind of statements, be aware, be self-aware. Okay, fine. Now, going back, I'm skipping a paragraph. This, the lines I want to break now, the specific lines I want to break down, it goes like this. One, two, three, four, counting my blessings I'm thankful for. Okay, and it goes like this. In, in the video, there's a rabbit out there, a big fluffy rabbit, you know, cute, adorable. And what does it represent to me? It represents the pureness and the innocence of Jay, where Jay wants to be, where Jay wants to go to. And he wants to get to that level, but he can't. So what do you do? You know, bam, he hits it. Knox takes off the mask, the head of the rabbit, and who does he see? He sees himself. Okay, and with the painted face, doesn't not even the real face. Why? Because it's still me in the end. We run, we run, we run, we run, and run as fast as we can. And when we look back, it's still us. You can't run away from your problems. Ultimately, you got to learn to face them. It's still going to be you. You know, oh, I hate, I hate, I hate. Smash, smash, destroy, destroy. You're still going to have to deal with your problems. But now, if you mess things up, it's even harder to get them fixed. Okay. Then he goes like this, five, six, seven, eight, you know, I got sucked into the myth, you know, oh, the myth, the myth. I'm supposed to be this perfect Asian wonder child, fantastic career, great family, tons of money, and my family lives with me. And we all get along really, really happily, and they watch my children. Again, that's the fantasy, not the reality, but we all get sucked into that. Now, then he goes like this, I'm in too deep, yeah. Who can relate? Fine. I'm going to break that down a lot further. Those two lines. I'm going to go back to those two lines. I'm in too deep. Yeah. Who can relate? I want to break that down a lot further. But again, I'm going to have articles. I want to highlight some things. But it, what it's telling me is he's seeking support. He's looking for some kind of answer. Who can relate to the pain that I find myself in? Now, then it goes down the next paragraph. The, the specific lines I want to break is stay with me when I'm not strong. Mom, my wife, my dad, my siblings, my friends, my immediate family, okay? When I fail to be the person I'm meant to be, when I fail to live up to expectations, and everyone goes through that, okay? I was supposed to be this perfect son, and I'm a failure. I'm a failure, and I see myself in a very negative light. So it goes like this, sway with me will I die young. All right, sway with me when I die young. Will I be lucky enough to die young? Breaking those two lines down so I don't have to be a burden on my own family and I can just disappear. When I Will I die young? Will I die young? Can I, I don't have to have to deal with this. I have to deal with the pressure where I am right now. And if I die young, I don't have to worry about my wife or my kids. Having to, what's going to do with the old man? How am I going to take care of him? Finally, he goes like this. In the last paragraph, drink some red, baby. I'll be dead tomorrow. These two lines I want to specifically break down four times. Drink some red, baby. I'll be dead tomorrow. Now, he alludes to the fact that he had a problem with alcohol and he was abusing it. Understandable. He became an alcoholic, heavy, heavy drinking because the idea was, let me go to myself with oblivion. I don't want to deal with life. I don't want to have to deal with reality. 
Okay, this is my coping skill. That's not a coping skill. Anything that's self-destructive is not going to be a coping skill. You know, mom must be so proud of you. Oh, God, let me drink another half bottle. Because in the video, you see him pouring the bottle of red on himself, blah, blah, blah. And he's referring the dead, the dead. The de I'll be dead. I'm emotionally dead. I'm dead from the neck up. I don't exist anymore. Why? I abandoned my mom. So therefore, I must be a failure, and I'm dead to myself as well. I'm dead to her. I'm dead to myself. That's the point of the song. Now, okay, I want to segue, because now what I want to do is I want to break down those two lines. Here I go. The two lines I want to break down again. You know, I'm in too deep. I'm in too deep. Yeah, who can relate? Okay, now I want to go from the fantasy to the reality of today's situation for not just Asians, quote, quote, but just people in general. But I'm going to reflect on it because of his background. Here we go. There's an article from 2017. It goes, in Korea, okay, elders are highly respected. Okay, this is because it's rooted in the Confucian, Confucian, in, Confu, Confucian <laughs> principle of filiate, filial purity that one must respect one's parents. And there's a quote, younger members of the family have a duty to care for the aging members of the family. Okay. Now you got the Chinese perspective. Okay. That's Korea, 50 million people. Here's China. Chinese children care for their parents in old age. Okay. Chinese families view respect for one's elders on the highest as the highest virtue. There's a statement from someone who lives in Beijing is that Placing your parents in retirement homes will see will label you as uncaring or a bad son. However, the tradition is beginning to break down in China due to the country's situation, one-child policy, rising life expectancy, and aging population. So nursing homes are becoming socially acceptable. Population in China today, 1.1 billion. India, okay, elders are the head of the family. Many Indians live in joint family units with the elders acting as the head of the household. The elders are supported by the younger members of the family and disrespecting members, uh, disrespecting the elders of the family or sending them off to an old age home has a social stigma in India. Population of India, 1 billion. Okay. Here is the reality. The reality of the situation. Asia's elderly. The elderly population of the Southeast Asian countries have exploded in the first part of the century. Exploded. Number two, taking care of the elderly is described by many as hell on earth. Okay. Young are turning over the care of the, the burden of the el the burden of the elderly to the state, and the state is charging them. Okay. Asia is shifting from traditional care with multifamily homes to state subsidize elderly care, which is rapidly becoming the norm. Okay. Korea, going back to Korea now. Well-documented case of statistics of elderly abandonment. One third of Korean seniors live alone. The churches will see the elderly line up for up to six hours at a time to get 50 cents and a small snack of fruit. China has now established Confucian laws which requires children to visit or provide for elderly parents. It's a law now you have to. People are being sued in China for not visiting their parents, and there are guardianship now issues in the cases of divorced parents. All right. Going to Britain, okay, where there's a huge population of Indians that live there, East Asians. Here's what they say. This came from the newspaper, The Guardian. Reality. Why are people dealing with this issue? What's happening now? Okay, because the parents of these young people, the parents of people like Jay, actually, they dealt with racism, horrible life, trying to get a foot in the door because of the color of their skin and their background. And this created guilt. And they struggled, and kids were obliged to look after them after they became old, because there was a sense of, I struggled to give you a better life, so you kind of owe me. Now, 
to be home all day with elderly parents today is very, very difficult. Why? Because he would take on that role, the daughters or the daughter-in-laws. Why is it daughter-in-laws? So what's the problem? Now women have to work outside the home. You need that dual income. More and more families are having less and less children. Hear what China said, one kid per family. Now, new generation, someone like Jay, they didn't have to deal with racism. They didn't have to deal with that kind of crushing guilt, so they don't have the same load of guilt as the prior generation did. All right, so things have changed. Is the reality, there's a fantasy about what, you know, what it used to be, then there's the reality. Now, what can you do when your parents need your help? All right. Talk about your own needs and abilities. What can you actually do? What can you do? All right. What kind of relationship do you actually have with your parents? Is it a good one? You know, is it a strong one? Without creating more bad blood. So can you get along with each other? That's huge. Not every time can you get along with people who are getting elderly. They can be difficult. Do you have the type of personality to even begin to provide such kind of care? It's not meant for everybody. God bless my sister for what she did with my own dad. She, she, she hung through. She hung tough. People also have this feeling of it's all or nothing. Life is not like that. You could even be a good son or a good daughter by taking care of them, like making sure they get, they get the right nursing home, they, where people want to die at home today more and more. So do they have hospice care? Can someone come to the home? Can someone clean? Can you change the bathtub so they can actually not worry about falling and, and breaking something? What can you do on a different level? You don't have to have that guilt like overwhelming you. And you can still be a support to them and accept what you can and what you can't handle. You know, what can you do and what can't you do? It's okay. Biggie, biggie, biggie. Understand the financial situation that these elderly parents are going to find themselves in. You got to start saving now. Do you need supplemental insurance? This is reality. But don't wait till you're 85. Do it when you're 55. Trust me, I had this with my own family, my own father in particular, and it was a nightmare because he waited and waited and waited till the very, very end. Don't do that. Most important. Seek advice and guidance from people that have done this before, that have gone through this, who have elderly parents. I've advised so many people since the death of my dad on what you should do and what you shouldn't do to avoid these kinds of hassles. You'll come to realize that your problems are not so unique. Okay, and there are those out there who will face similar situations to you as well. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Don't reach for the non-reality you know, deal with this sooner than later because we're all going to get old someday. So deal with it now and realize where you can go with this. Now, I want to share something also just to kind of close with this. We really appreciate what Jay did by reaching out to us. That was really, really huge. And this guy's a talented young man with a huge upside, and he's already done a lot of great things in music and creativity anyway. We're going to have a link set up. Okay, so you can actually see the song, see his lyrics, see what he wrote, and then when you had the chance to watch his stuff, there's a chance for you to leave comments. Leave comments for him, because guess what? He is like us. He writes back to his fans. So get a chance to show your appreciation for him for what he did, for the guts that he took with his situation by doing the vi watch the video, read the lyrics, Read what he said as a synopsis. There'll be a click there, description box. Click on it and leave a comment. And finally, thank you, Jay, for having the guts to open this up for discussion. Okay, and good luck on your career. And we only want to see the best for you. Thanks again, everybody. Sunridge of Nevada. And do me a favor. Write to us also, how did you feel about your parents getting older? Did you deal with it well? Was there problems? You wish you could have done things differently? Because we'll take the best ideas and suggestions and we'll share with everybody else to give them a chance to understand what can you do to mitigate the very real reality of parents getting older and your response to it. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Appreciate, appreciate, appreciate it. And keep on watching and viewing and, of course, commenting. We love them. Thanks.